To find the second derivative of 4x squared plus 5y squared equals 5, an implicit equation, you need to, to know two things. You need to know the basics of implicit differentiation, and you need to know the quotient rule. Let's begin. First, we'll take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to x. Let's take the derivative term by term. The derivative of 4x squared is 8x. And then, because we're finding the derivative of y with respect to x, the derivative of 5y squared is 10y times y prime, which stands for a factor of the derivative of y with respect to x. On the other side of the equation, the derivative of 5 is just 0. Now, we're when we're, we're solving for the derivative of y with respect to x, we're solving with y prime. So we have two steps to complete the first derivative. The first step, and again, we're isolating y prime. The first step is to subtract 8x from both sides. We're going to take 8x away from both sides of the equation. And that leaves you with 10y times the derivative of y with respect to x equals negative 8x. And then to isolate y prime, we'll divide both sides of the equation by 10y. Divide both sides of the equation by 10y. That leaves you with negative 8x over 10y. 8 and 10 are both divisible by 2. The first derivative of 4x squared plus 5y squared equals 5 is negative 4x over 5y. Now to find the second derivative, we will take the derivative of negative 4x over 5y. So we have our first derivative, negative 4x over 5y. This is a quotient. To find the second derivative, we'll differentiate again using the quotient rule. The quotient rule says that if you take the derivative of any function of the form of f over g, the derivative is the denominator, the original denominator unchanged, times the derivative of the numerator, minus the original numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the original denominator squared. In this problem, it'll make it a lot simpler if we take the constant multiple negative 4 fifths and leave that out front and then just apply the quotient rule to x over y. This is called the constant multiple rule of differentiation and it will make this derivative a little easier. The negative 4 over 5 will remain in front of multiplied by the derivative of x over y as we compute this second derivative. Well, applying the quotient rule, our numerator is x and the denominator is y. So when we apply the quotient rule, the denominator times the derivative of the numerator is y, the original denominator unchanged, times the derivative of x, which is 1, minus the original numerator, which is x, times the derivative of the denominator y. The derivative of y is 1, but just like the first derivative, anytime you take the derivative of y, you have to include a factor of y prime all over the original denominator squared, which in this case is y squared. So the negative 4 fifths in the front is going to remain there unchanged. And I can clean things up a little bit. y times 1 is just y. x times 1 is just x. And then I'm going to replace y prime, I'm going to replace y prime with what we found the derivative of y to be after step one. We found the that the first derivative of y was negative 4x over 5y. So all that I've done in this step is replaced y prime with negative 4x over 5y. So I do have this big complex fraction represents the second derivative. But I can do a lot of simplifying, and that's what I'll do next. The first thing I'll do to simplify this complex fraction is the multiplication of negative x times negative 4x over 5y. I can think of negative x as negative x over 1 and multiply negative x times negative 4x and 1 times 5y. That product, negative x times negative 4x, is positive 4x squared, and the denominator, 5y, remains unchanged. Notice that the factor of negative 4 fifths remains unchanged in front of the fraction. The first term in the numerator, y, and the y squared in the denominator also remain unchanged. Now, this is still a complex fraction because there's a fraction in the numerator. I'm going to eliminate 
the 5y in the denominator of 4x squared over 5y by multiplying by a factor of 1. I'm going to multiply this entire fraction by 1, but I'm going to choose a special form of the number 1. 5y over 5y. And the reason that I'm doing this is because when I multiply 5y times 4x squared over 5y, those 5y's are going to cancel out. But I certainly have to multiply 5y times both terms in the numerator and 5y times the y squared in the denominator. The result of this, 5y times y is 5y squared. And then when I multiply 5y times the second term, which is the fraction, the 5y's cancel out. And all that I'm left with is 4x squared. The result of multiplying 5y in the denominator is 5y times y squared, which is 5y to the third. So now I've eliminated the uh, complex fraction. This is a lot more simplified than what it was when I started, but I can still do an additional simplification. We'll finalize our simplification of this second derivative by using an interesting property that often occurs with second derivatives of implicit equations. The original equation was 4x squared plus 5y squared equals 5. And notice, this polynomial 4x squared plus 5y squared shows up in the second derivative. This expression shows up in the second derivative. And it's equal to 5. So what I'm going to do is substitute that expression with a value of 5. That means the second derivative is equal to negative 4 fifths times 5 over 5y to the third power. The 5's divide away to be 1. I'm left with negative 4 fifths times 1 over y to the third which gives me a simplified second derivative, negative 4 over 5y to the third.